Hello friends, welcome back to our channel, Neat Biology Expert. This is Dr. Parveen. In this lecture series, we are studying class 12 biology, molecular basis of inheritance. In this particular lesson, we are going to learn about what is RNA, what are the different types of RNA. First, what is RNA? RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. Ribonucleic acid, which is an important biological macromolecule which is present in all these cells. Right. So similar to DNA, which is a nucleic acid, RNA is also an another nucleic acid. So suppose if somebody asks you DNA or RNA, which formed first in life? What would be your answer? The answer is RNA. RNA came before DNA because RNA is a very simple molecule, simple in structure. And also you know that this RNA is made up of ribose sugars. So ribose sugars are formed first, then came the deoxyribose sugar, that is the DNA molecule. Okay, right. So what are the basic functions of RNA? RNA is principally involved in carrying the genetic information from DNA nucleus to the cell. So it acts as a messenger between the DNA and the ribosomes. So look here, this is a structure of the cell. Okay, so this purple color structure is what this is the cell nucleus. So we know that inside the nucleus, there is DNA. Okay, so the DNA is the genetic material of the organism, which gives all the instructions for the function of the cell. So in order to produce a protein or an enzyme or a hormones, this genetic information are coded in the DNA. So how this genetic information will be transferred to the site of the protein synthesis? So where is the protein synthesis occurs? It occurs in the ribosome. Ribosome, they are present in the cytoplasm, isn't it? So this RNA carries or transfers the genetic information from the DNA which is present inside the nucleus to the cytoplasm that means outside the nucleus. This is one of the function of the RNA particularly mRNA is involved in this function. Okay. Then RNA is also involved in protein synthesis. That means an mRNA contains information on how to connect the amino acids into a peptide chain to form proteins. So RNA is also involved in protein synthesis and it is also involved in enzyme synthesis. What is enzyme? An enzyme is a biocatalyst which speed up the rate of a reaction. So here RNA is also involved in enzyme synthesis. So not only that, some RNA, they themselves act as an enzymes directly. So example is ribozyme. Ribozymes. So what are ribozymes? Ribozymes is also called as ribonucleic acid enzymes. That means these are RNA molecules that have the ability to catalyze specific biochemical reaction. So instead of making enzymes, these ribosomes directly act as an enzymes in some uh, biochemical reactions. Okay. And RNA is also involved in the production of new cells. So these are the functions of RNA. So let us see what is a RNA. RNA is a single long chain polynucleotide. So this is a single chain. So unlike DNA, which is a double standard molecule, you know that DNA is a double standard molecule like this, right? So unlike DNA, which is a double standard molecule, RNA is a single standard chain, okay? Not only that, this is a long chain, long chain, which is about 70 to 120,000 ribonucleotides in length, which are joined together end to end. So it contains, that means RNA is made up of polymers of repeating subunits that we call as nucleotides. So what is a nucleotide? Nucleotide has three important components. Nucleotide is made up of three important components. So one is a nitrogenous base. This is a nitrogenous base. And second one is a pentose sugar, a pentose sugar. And the third one is a phosphate group. So these three components joins together to form a nucleotide. Similarly, many nucleotide joins together to form a polynucleotide. 
Okay, this is what we call as the polymer also. Okay, many monomers joins together to form polymer. So, this is how the structure of RNA forms. So, what forms the backbone of the RNA? So, look at this picture. This is the RNA structure. So, what forms the backbone of the RNA? The backbone of the RNA is made up of phosphate group and the pento sugar. So, this phosphate group and pento sugar, they join together and form the backbone. And what about this structure? This structure, these are the nitrogenous bases. These are the nitrogenous bases. Now, let us see the structure of a ribonucleotide. That is the structure of a nucleotide present in a RNA. Okay. So, it contains a phosphate group, a pento sugar and a nitrogenous base. So, if you see this pento sugar, pento sugar means this contains five carbon atoms. So, here the first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon and the fifth carbon. So, the phosphate group is combined with the fifth carbon of the pento sugar. Okay. And here the nitrogenous base are attached to the first carbon of the pento sugar. So, if you look at here at the third carbon of the pento sugar and another phosphate group will be attached like this. Then only this monomer will join together and form a polymer or a polynucleotide. Okay, right. So, there are two types of bonds in this ribonucleotide. The first one is the phosphodiester bond and the second one is the glycosidic bond. So, phosphodiester bond is the bond which present in between the fifth carbon of the pento sugar and to the phosphate group and the glycosidic bond is present in between the first carbon of the pento sugar and it attaches to the nitrogenous base okay so these are the two types of bonds present in a nucleotide ribonucleotide right so let us see the basic difference between a dna and a rna so dna stands for deoxyribonucleic acid so, as the name indicates, the ribose sugar present in DNA is deoxyribose. Okay. This is structure of a DNA deoxyribose sugar. This is ribose sugar which is present in RNA. So, what is the difference here? So, look here. At the second carbon of this ribose sugar, one hydroxyl group is present. Okay. Whereas, at the second carbon of the deoxyribose sugar, there is no hydroxyl group. Only one H is present. So, this is the basic difference. So, that's why, see here, in the ribose sugar, which is present in the RNA, there are two hydroxyl groups. So, what is the function of the hydroxyl groups? These hydroxyl groups are the active uh, groups. They participate in more reactions. Okay. So, it helps the molecules to interact with the next molecule and participate in the more reactions. of. It is the functional group. So, since this... RNA ribose has two hydroxyl group. RNA is very much active. That's why it functions in a protein synthesis. It functions as an enzyme. It itself functions as an enzyme ribosome. So like this, it participates in more activities because it has two functional groups, two OH groups. Whereas if we see the DNA, it has only one hydroxyl group at the uh, third carbon okay at the second carbon there is only one hydrogen so dna is less functional so this property only makes dna a more stable molecule so when we talk about uh, uh, genetic material so what is the function of the genetic material the genetic material has to carry the information from one generation to next generation so in order to carry the information first the genetic material itself has to be in a stable mode isn't it it should not undergo frequent changes it should not undergo more mutation should not participate in many other uh, activities like this so that's why dna is less reactive and more stable it acts as a genetic material whereas rna is more reactive because it has two functional groups so this is not a genetic material okay understand so this is the basic difference between the ribose sugar which is present in dna and rna now let us move on to the next thing that is the nitrogenous base so we know that the nitrogenous bases are of two types purine bases and pyrimidine bases adenine and guanine are purine bases cytosine thymine and uracil are pyrimidine bases so in case of dna cytosine and thymine are present as the pyrimidine bases 
whereas in RNA, instead of thymine, uracil is present. Okay, so no thymine in RNA, only uracil is present. So if we talk about pyrimidine bases in RNA, you must talk about only cytosine and uracil. Understand? Now, let us see the differences between the DNA and RNA, whatever we have seen so far. So first, DNA is a double standard molecule. Okay, this is a double standard molecule like this. Whereas RNA is a single standard molecule, right? The second difference is the sugar, the deoxyribose sugar is present in DNA, whereas in the RNA, ribose sugar is present. This is the second difference. And the third difference is the nitrogenous base, pyrimidine base present in DNA is thymine, whereas in case of RNA, this is uracil. Okay, right. So these are the basic differences between DNA and RNA. So here, that's why. As I told you previously, DNA acts as a genetic material, carries information uh, generation over generation. Okay. Whereas RNA is not a genetic material in majority of the organisms, except in few viruses, it acts as a genetic material. So, rest in other organisms, it is majorly involved in protein synthesis. This is the major function of RNA. And DNA is present only inside the nucleus of the cell. So, when we see a cell, this is the nucleus, okay, DNA is present only inside the nucleus, whereas RNA is present inside the nucleus as well as in the cytoplasm. So, these are the differences between DNA and RNA. So, let us see about the strands, the strands of this nucleic acid. So, when we talk about DNA, we know that DNA is a double standard molecule. So, this is one strand and this is another strand. So, in between these two strands, there are nitrogenous bases, right? So, if this is adenine, it passes with thymine. If this is guanine, it passes with cytosine. So, like this, purine and pyrimidine bases, they form base pairing. So, because of this base pairing, the DNA is a double standard. Whereas, when we see rna rna is a single stranded molecule okay so it contains only one strand so only the phosphate group and the sugar they they form the backbone okay backbone this gray color is the backbone whereas this colored thing these are the nitrogenous bases present in the rna okay but Whereas, if you see in some places, this RNA, which is a long linear strand, it coils itself and it forms pairing between these bases. Okay, you understand? So, this long single standard RNA, what will happen? At some places, it coiled, it coiled itself and these uh, nitrogenous bases, they join together and form the pairing. So, such pairing is called as, see here, this is a long, this blue color thing is a long RNA, okay. So, there is a twist here. So, if this is a RNA, there will be a twist here and after some time, there will be a twist here. So, wherever there is a coiling or a uh, twist like here, so those bases join together and form a bond in between them. That means hydrogen bond will be formed here, okay. So, this is called as nucleobases nucleobases okay so this nucleobases forms base pairing now we know that rna is basically a linear molecule which is single standard okay so is that always this rna is single standard no in some microorganisms there exists double standard rna okay so like dna the rna is also double standard in some microorganisms Example, rotavirus. So, rotavirus is a virus which commonly causes infection, gastro infection, abdominal infection in small children. Okay. So, in this virus, the genetic material itself is a double standard RNA. So, look at this picture here. This is a double standard. This is a double standard. So, like this double standard RNA is the genetic material of this virus. Similarly, in some bacteriophage, its genetic material is double standard RNA. So, with this exception, in majority of the organism, generally RNA is a single standard molecule. Okay. So, also we have seen uh, when uh, talking about the differences between DNA and RNA, DNA is the 
genetic material, the genomic material in majority of the organism, whereas the RNA functions in the protein synthesis. But there are some exceptions in this also. So when we see RNA in some viruses, RNA act as a genome, that is genetic material in some viruses. Okay, example, hepatitis C virus, Ebola virus, SARS virus, influenza virus, polio virus and AIDS virus. So in all these viruses, it contains RNA as the genetic material, no DNA. We know that actually in viruses, the genetic material would be either DNA or RNA, not both. Okay, but in this uh, group of viruses, the genetic material is RNA, RNA. Understood? Right. Now, let us see what are the different types of RNA. So, there are about 6-7 types of RNA. So, messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA, transfer RNA, small nuclear RNA, heterogeneous nuclear RNA, regulatory RNA and genomic RNA. So, these are the different types of RNAs present in a cell. This, all these types of RNA is essential for the function of a cell. Whereas, in the your syllabus, only three major types of RNA were given because these RNAs are the major class of RNA which are involved in the gene expression. Okay, so in majority of the cell functions will be done by these three RNA. That is messenger RNA, in short we call mRNA, ribosomal RNA, in short we call rRNA, transfer RNA, in short we call tRNA. Okay, so we will study about the structure and function of only these three type of RNA. If you like this lesson, like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel, Meet Biology Expert. Thank you.